Gospel of July the 2nd, 2015, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After entering a boat, Jesus made the crossing and came into his own town. And there people brought to him a paralytic laying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive his sins. He then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He rose and went home. When the crowd saw this, they were struck with awe, and glorified God who had given such authority to men. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The end of the Gospel is somehow mysterious. We can believe that they are mistaken. For God, we could, it, it would seem to us that God had not given such power or authority to men. When we see the scene and we try to understand it, we come to realize that on the surface the scribes are right. Apparently this man Jesus is blaspheming, because who can forgive sins but God? And to them Jesus seemed quite a person, quite a normal human person, and they were right. They were absolutely right. For Jesus our Lord is a true human person, but also the second person of the triune God, the eternal Logos incarnated. In the Council of Chalcedon, the year 461, if I am not mistaken, the Council Fathers agreed to say that in the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, two natures coexist in a hypostasis, united by hypostasis, the nature of a true man and the nature of true God, without mixing, without demeaning, without confusion. So they are quite right, but they could not see that before them was God himself. Now, the whole scene of the Gospel is about faith, and through faith and intercession, an incredible miracle. This Gospel of Matthew, which according to some of the exegetes, some of the learned people in, in, in the Church, was taken from Mark, which is the oldest of the Gospels, and adapted to the Jewish people. For in Mark, they say that the four people that were carrying the paralytic, trying to get near the Lord Jesus into the house of Simon Peter, which was the one who had the, the house there, encountered such a crowd that they could not get past them especially at the door. So they decided to climb into the top of the roof, make a hole in the roof and then lower the paralytic. Matthew does not recount that, yet he is keen to say that Jesus saw their faith and that was enough for him to grant for forgiveness of the sins to the paralytic. So. We see how those friends of the paralytic loved him so much that they decided to spend the afternoon picking up their friend, carrying him over to the teacher so that he could be saved, so that he could be healed. Little did they know that what was going to happen was that the Lord was going to forgive his sins and along with his sins was going to heal his body too. For God likes to work with the entirety of ourselves, not only to heal our body, but to heal that which creates death, for the salary of sin is death. 
So he wants to free us from our sins. That is what the cross was for. That is what the spilling of his blood was for. So that we could be cleansed from our sins and then reconciled with our Father. So we see also the, the force, the strength of intercession. We have some friends of a paralytic person that intercede before God. We see a, trip, a, a third point, which is the judging of others. Apparently the scribes would have been perfectly right in their judgment, but they were mistaken because they could not grasp the enormity of the presence that was there with, with them, that is God himself. The question of the Lord is very simple, apparently. What is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven, or rise, pick up your stretcher and go home? There are two miracles. For again, whenever we hear those words, your sins are forgiven, we are given back our eternal life. We don't see that. They didn't see that at the time. And not today do we see that when we are forgiven our sins. But we see that spectacular sighting of the paralytic standing up, picking up his own stretcher and going home. Yet, nowadays, a good doctor or even a good robotic technician could devise some sort of uh, gizmo, an apparatus, to pick up a guy that is paralytic with batteries, with the motors, with all kinds of stuff and then at the push of a button you grab the paralytic and put him straight and make him walk. Yes, a good doctor, a good engineer could do that. But no doctor, no engineer and no person without God could forgive one single sin because the forgiveness of the sins is entirely a privilege of God. So the biggest miracle that day was not that the Lord said to the paralytic, stand up, pick up your stretcher and go home, but the forgiveness of, their sin, of his sins. And what brought about those two miracles? The faith and the intercession of his friends. Now I ask you, would you like to be friends with someone that really need your help? Look around in your family and start praying from them, for them. Look around among your friends and start praying for them. But then I ask you, go deeper and just as Saint Therese of Abela, just to say, the greatest of our charities is interceding for those who are bind up with great sins, those that are paralytics, those that do not have anyone for them to pray for. You might find those in the persons that you reject or that they, because they reject you, that you don't like because they are not likable, that no, as a matter of fact, nobody likes them except God. And if we can start praying for them, then we can start having the feelings of the heart of Jesus in our own. If we do that, we can be sure that we will meet in heaven. God bless you all, brothers.